Now we're going to look at the next part of the relationships and anti-bullying theme, the other side of relationships. In the previous section, we looked at how the SEAL materials could support learners' ability to recognise, understand and nurture healthy relationships and how this promotes and supports emotional health and well-being. In this section, we're going to have a look at the opposite, so how unhealthy and exploitative relationships can lead to negative outcomes. Um, this is quite useful work for leading on to PSHE and RSE themes of uh, things like potential exploitation, risk taking in relationships, keeping yourself safe in real life and online and so on. Um, <clears throat> it also includes recognising, understanding and doing something about bullying, which by definition is a relationship of unequal power. So that looks at what we can do, whether as a target, a bystander or as a whole school. Then finally, in this section, we look at stereotyping, prejudice and discrimination um, and how they can sort of come about. Um, we consider uh, how they impact on those who suffer from them and on society generally. Um, and how we can reduce the harm that relationships inflict on both the doer and the done too. Uh, topic links to a number of progression steps. Again, we're not going to um, linger on these, but do pause the video and have a look if, that, if that's particularly helpful for you. Um, these come mainly from within What Matters Statement 4. Um, and this uh, What Matters Statement 4 considers how we engage with social influences and how this shapes our, our values, our attitudes and our identity. Uh, and obviously there's, there's clear links with this area coming from this theme. So the topic of unhealthy relationships um, within SEAL, it starts at the individual level. So uh, in primary SEAL, we have in year six, uh, where the issue begins to be addressed. Um, this looks at the importance of being able to break friends uh, if we feel that the relationship is not healthy or we're not comfortable um, within a relationship. Uh, there's a particular story, the Paula and Magenic story, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. Basically, the two girls are friends and Paula looks up to, to Magenic. Um, which causes her to do things that she wouldn't normally do uh, within a more equal relationship. So Paula goes skateboarding with Magenic and her cool friends, even though she doesn't like skateboarding and she knows she's not that good at it. But when Magenic encourages her to try a complicated manoeuvre, she knows really that you know, she's not going to be able to do it, but she gives it a go. She doesn't want to sort of lose face in front of uh, Magenic and her, her cool crew. Uh, sadly, she has an accident. Uh, she goes through the glass of an old green greenhouse and she's quite badly injured. And as she sort of comes to, she can just hear Magenic saying, oh, it's not my fault and being really angry. So she gets up and, and takes herself home and makes the decision in the end to break friends um, with Magenic. Uh, so it's quite a useful story for talking about that kind of issue at the individual level. and it's developed, um, that this kind of idea is developed through year seven, eight and nine uh, in the anti-bullying materials. So uh, I think there's one called um, Friends or Enemies um, in year seven, where that uses the um, some text from Cat's Eyes by Margaret Atwood um, and a range of a range of popular films and, and books. There's a lot, a lot that you can draw on in uh, in that area. So although SEAL, it doesn't itself address specific issues of grooming and exploitation and online safety and so on, the underlying skills involved in you know, recognising and um, resisting any form of pressure to conform to behaviours that you, you know aren't right or that, that make you feel uneasy, these are clearly SEAL skills. Um, they include things like uh, valuing yourself and knowing that you're okay as you are, warts and all. You don't have to do things other people want you to just to, to be acceptable. Um, it includes the ability to stop 
peer or social pressure um, and to, to, to have the skills to resist it. And finally, another massive one um, that we looked at in the previous theme is that ability to be assertive, to chart your own course, to say, no, I won't do that. And, you know, all of these go towards our ability to kind of make wise decisions, to weigh up risks and make wise decisions. So the areas listed um, on, on this slide um, and highlighted on the next slide as well, they, they follow really well on from the developments within the theme of relationships. So it can quite nicely lead on to uh, PSE. You might like to use something like this. Um, there's a, these are great materials, the NSPCC, it's not okay materials. Um, and this, you can kind of draw on those links between the SEAL themes and skills and um, relationships and sexuality education or PSHE. There's a link there to those lessons and they are very, very good. Another form of relationship that impacts negatively on our mental health um, are those uh, relationships that are involved in bullying. And the, um, there's some really helpful uh, CPD modules online from the Anti-Bullying Alliance, uh, which is actually one of our takeaways. So there's a link to those um, at the end of this, um, this group of videos. But what the one on um, bullying and mental health tells us that children who are bullied are 30% more likely to experience depression later in life. It's quite a massive statistic, isn't it? Real worrying, worrying stat. Um, experiencing bullying can be frightening and distressing, can reduce a child or young person's self-confidence, leaving them unable, uh, feeling unable to do the things they used to and it can lead to feelings of social isolation, increased anxiety, and may lead to depression and anxiety disorders. So, um, you know, really important topic that we make sure we, we cover that falls under this remit of healthy, really healthy or unhealthy relationships. Um, there's, they're, they're, they're both primary and secondary anti-bullying uh, materials. The primary one I think I mentioned before is called Say No to Bullying. Um, and within the materials, different aspects or different perspectives on bullying are addressed at different ages. So, you know, there's the same kind of structured nature of learning opportunities, building on what's been done the previous year. Um, there's, uh, you, again, you call, pause the slide and, uh, you know, have a look at the uh, materials, what the, the focus of each year is. Um, but throughout all of the year groups uh, for all ages there's a focus on respectful relationships and valuing diversity um, because if we don't have that as a starting point then any attempts to deal with bullying behaviors are fairly fruitless so that's a kind of ongoing theme through all of the uh, materials um, the anti-bullying themes probably just remains to say that they, you know, that, that, that they can be used flexibly according to the needs and context of the school. Um, you know, lots of schools are designed um, as a kind of, you can use them during anti-bullying week, for example. There are a series of different lesson plans in different curriculum areas. So you can kind of condense them into a week or, you know, use them as and when or use them um, to, to, to practice some of the skills, for example, that are taught in other other seal themes um, but very flexible flexible use and loads of lovely ideas for anti-bullying activities in you know history maths art all of the uh, different curriculum areas um, there is a, a, a i think now um, an understanding that anti-bullying has to have uh, has to take a whole school approach um, and so many of the activities that we look at actually aim to develop that kind of shared understanding of what bullying is. Um, of course, the role of the assembly in uh, the primary materials, and I'm sure you know there's a, you'll, you'll have a lot of equivalence in secondary, um, in the secondary context. Um, it's really, really important to have this assembly to invite all the staff, um, office staff, caretakers, governors, if you can parents if you can um, because 
what the assembly enables everybody there to do is to consider what it is that constitutes bullying behavior in the school um you know and if we've got a, a shared understanding of that particularly um, among parents then you know we, we, we we've got a really good starting point and schools who've done that have said that you know the the cues of parents coming to the school to say their child's being bullied have actually reduced substantially um and incidents are dealt with in a, a more appropriate way without some of the heat that's uh, generated in in um you know quite understandably when parents are concerned that their child is being bullied um so in each year group the children and the staff revisit the three essential criteria um, or characteristics of bullying and they do that before the assembly so that that is reinforced by the assembly um, and in a nutshell those are you know bullying behaviors are those that are repeated that are deliberate and involve a power differential okay they are intentional and deliberate to harm to cause harm um, to somebody um, and as well as the, uh, the the assembly, which show what the characteristics of bullying might look like in in, um, uh, in concrete examples, different forms of bullying are considered throughout the material. So we've got physical to exclusion to rumour mongering to cyber bullying and so on. Um, and the children are kept on track with a different a little quiz at the beginning um, of each, the, the session. Um, in, a, in all of the year groups materials. So of course the other things that uh, a whole school are displays around the school get some really really good ones. We've got <laughs> one of the areas we've got loads and loads of excellent uh, display photos and of course the shared focus for focus for noticing and rewarding target behaviours. Um, that's the one for the kind of posters around the school, the rewarding um, and noticing and then the um, reward assembly if that's what you use in your school. Some of the activities that we particularly like from the, um, so, you know, the anti-bullying materials are listed here. So um, they cover you know, the focus on how bullying feels and the impact um, on our emotional health and well-being. Um, an exploration of why um, children might use bullying behaviours um, and of course that crucial role of bystanders. Um, where it's okay to tell, uh, which is the key message or one of the key messages that we want to get across. Um, there's a lovely strategy that's used in the um, uh, in the materials where you know when children are a little bit perhaps ambivalent about whether or not it's okay to tell on another child doing something, um, to, they, they suggest that staff ask students whether it's more like whether telling on somebody bullying is more like telling on a pupil getting involved in behavior that's against the rules or is it more like telling an adult about a child who's in danger or about to get hurt so somebody who's running into a road or has fallen into a lake and can't swim um, so that can be quite powerful in kind of explaining the difference between bullying and other types of what we might think of as a bad behaviour. So we'll just have a quick look at one of the year six drama activities as an example um, from this list. Take a minute if you can now just pause the presentation to, to, to read through the, um, the, the, the poem here um, and think have a think about how you might use it with the class. It's, a, it's really powerful this poem and I think it's, it's one that's included in the year six materials. You have to use it with care, um, particularly where children have been uh, exposed to or experienced bullying. Um, so have a read of it and take a moment just to think about it in the same way that you'd let the children have a moment to, to talk in pairs, maybe about their, their feelings and thoughts. So there's some drama ideas suggested um, in the materials on the side here. Um, the freeze frame technique you'll probably be familiar with where children kind of make statues um, or you know without movement or noise to to, to show what's happening um, and you can do a fantastic display you know with a digital camera and um, putting the, the photos of the different kind of sculptures or freeze frames up which is really good. Um, the conscience alley is another drama technique um, which you 
may again have come across, but it's really for exploring any sort of dilemma um, faced by a, a character or a person in a story or a poem. And it provides an opportunity to analyse a, a decisive moment, if you like, in greater detail. So basically the class forms two lines facing each other. Um, you could call one, you know, ignore your conscience and the other side, the good conscience or however you want to label them, angel and devil and so on. Um, and then one person, so the teacher or a, a, a student that you've chosen, walks between the lines and each member of the group speaks. And um, we can have a look at, you know, those kind of different um, narratives that are going on in the uh, in, in the mind of the bully, the person doing the bullying, I should say, um, the perpetrator and perhaps, again, those who witness it whole load of stuff of course online um i think the the key job really is sort of inserting it into a framework um because there's so much out there but happily seal um does provide that framework um if you go back to the slide with the um different areas that are focused on from nursery up to year nine you could kind of see very easily where different different resources and different activities might fit into that framework this is one of um, our particular favourites. It's the BBC Life Babble series. Um, got loads of really good videos on different aspects of bullying. Um, there's at least one, sometimes more, for each of the, the different SEAL focuses. Um, and one of the really nice things, I think, or the good things about this is it doesn't shy away from looking or it doesn't simplify the issue of the person who uses the bullying behaviours as so many um, uh, resources do they're just bad people and of course we know that that isn't um, how it is the third type of unhelpful and damaging relationships um, that we'll look at are those that involve stereotypes um, seal has uh, themes that run through every activity and and every topic um, in seal and that is this importance of respecting everybody and so not for example letting difference get in the way of friendship and so on but we know don't we that simply exhorting children and young people to be kind and, and respectful isn't enough because we are all subjected to various influences from those around us from our parents from our friends from the media from society and some of these influences lead to us unconsciously falling into that trap of stereotyping particular groups of, of people, which can then lead to prejudice and discrimination, as we'll see. Um, in year five of the relationships theme, there's a focus on how beliefs about differences can lead to stereotyping and prejudice. And one example of this is the story um, on this slide which is about Shipper wanting to play the Artful Dodger in the school production of Oliver. And why shouldn't she? It's a great story. Um, it involves the metaphorical tearing up of Shipper's belief that she's as good as anybody else to play the part. Um, and it really demonstrates that limiting impact of stereotyping. It's really good to follow this up as um, one teacher that we talked to did with a video of a class that were asked by their teacher to draw a picture of an astronaut, a firefighter and a surgeon. And you won't be surprised to know, I'm sure, that without fail, each child drew a male figure. The teacher then announced that they were going to be visited right there and then by a real life astronaut, firefighter and surgeon. And if you watch this little video, you'll see that the class up absolutely wrapped and when three women walk in their faces are an absolute picture one of them shouts out it's fake they're dressed up it's really good uh, if, you, if you've got a moment now you know do watch that video it's uh, it's a great little one another story in the year five materials is called don't judge a book by its cover and it's another short, fun story which illustrates how uh, both the young and the old can be stereotyped and also can worry about being stereotyped. 
Um, and if you did want to follow that up, there's another great YouTube clip here, which you can um, you could have a look at and show the children. Uh, it's a, just introducing people in a um, people who kind of buck the stereotype. So Susan Boyle, Mo Farah, Michael Jordan and so on there. They're, they're described to start with and then revealed one after another. Um, and it's quite clever in the way that it kind of forces children to reevaluate their assumptions in the same way that perhaps the previous video did with the, um, the female workers. Um, this is a fantastic little video. There's a, a link there for you, um, which explains really clearly for younger children what a stereotype is. And I, I particularly like this little short clip because it, it shows how what we think about as compliments, being good at basketball is a good thing, right? <laughs> They're actually shown to be very limiting and frustrating to those who are actually subjected to them. And quite unconsciously, we may um, use stereotypes in our judgments about other people. And this is a, a really nice little video to, to show that. Um, this one is this video is, is again really useful, I think, for possibly for older learners, um, uh, upper primary and, and key stage three and four. And I think it's probably quite useful to show the beginning of a session or the end of a session exploring stereotypes, uh, discussion stimulus maybe, or as an example of, of um, what you've been what you've been exploring. So watch that if you if you if you're able to and think about ask the children or you know when you watch it think about what is the woman in the picture in the video thinking and why is she thinking that um it's really good to you know question yourself of course but also the the, the young people the children and young people what are they thinking as they watched it and then that can lead into a discussion about where stereotypes might come from and why the woman in the video is thinking the way that she is. Yeah, so, so have a look at that if you're able to now. Uh, in the anti-bullying materials for year eight, the power differential in bullying relationships is focused on. Um, there's some pictures to, to show different re relationships. Um, and learners have a look at the different ways that one person or group can have power over another because you know, they're bigger, there's more of them, they're stronger, they have access to some information that the target doesn't want others to know. All of these kind of things that can give one person power over another or one group power over another. And then in year nine, the idea of prejudice and discrimination kind of build on that work. Um, uh, uh, in, in the anti-bullying materials. So um, the a prejudice is viewed as a negative attitude to members towards members of a group based on a negative stereotype. And discrimination is viewed as action that's taken on the basis of that attitude, which then disadvantage individuals from particular groups. This is a really good, short, accessible little video that explains what I just talked about in the last slide much more coherently um, and in a child friendly way, but really makes clear that difference um, and the relationship between stereotypes and prejudice and discrimination. Um, we're going to have a look next. I hope you'll be able to watch this. Uh, it's a famous experiment on the next slide, which was undertaken by a teacher called Jane Elliott on April the 5th, 1968. And what's special about that date is that it was the day after the assassination of Martin Luther King. So it's a very powerful experiment that Jane Elliott undertook with her students in her class uh, and aimed to demonstrate how discrimination felt and the impact that it had, not just on the people that were discriminated against, but also on those doing the discrimination. Uh, the video on the next slide shows Jane Elliott, a lot older than she was when she did it, talking about this experiment. 
So pause the presentation to watch the video now if, if you can and then come back. Um, there are lots of examples of prejudice and discrimination to explore across time and geography. Um, some of them will fall in obviously to other curriculum areas, so it can be used as, as cross-curricular seal if you like. Um, some of the suggestions that are made in the seal materials are segregation in the southern states in the 50s and 60s, so things like the story of Rosa Parks, the civil rights movement and so on. Um, early Christians and Romans and the prejudices and discriminations there, apartheid in South Africa, Nazi Germany um, and... Sorry, I cut myself off there and I was going to say the um, you know, prejudice and discrimination that LGBT um, people have experienced um, in the la over over history. So, um, before we move on to the final part of relationships and anti-bullying, the um, sharing of good practice across the school, pause the video and and have a have a go at the quiz and this suggested activity if um, if you're able to. The quiz is I mentioned before that each year group has some kind of quiz type questions to focus um, uh, students, young people and children on those, you know, characteristics, those key characteristics of, um, of bullying. And this quiz is taken from the year seven materials, um, but obviously, you know, there are examples um, at different, different differentiated levels. Um, I think it might be quite interesting just while pausing and taking this opportunity to reflect on how clearly your own setting characterises bullying. So, you know, would they all, would staff, would children, would parents, governors, um, other people that come into school, would they be able to list the key characteristics of bullying in a way that, you know, these kind of three key characteristics, which are uh, fairly widely shared now?